Hey, how's it going, people? It is the Hop here, and today we have the LG 27GL850. I believe it could be that Bravo. I will put the link down in the description below of where to get this that will help out my channel. And anything from that link that you add to your cart will help my channel. So anytime you want to help the channel out and you purchase from Amazon, just go to one of my videos, click on one of the Amazon links, and that will help support my channel so I can get stuff such as more USB 3 extension cables to help out with the cable management of the new desk setup that I will show off as soon as it is done when I'm with the cable management and everything. But let's get to what you came to see here. Hopefully you are subscribed. If you're not a subscriber, you know where to hit that subscribe button, whether you're on phone, TV, or mobile, there is a way to subscribe for um, tablets and computers and laptops. So hit that, hit that notification button so it lets you know when my videos drop and go ahead and hit that like button because that like button will tell YouTube that enough people like this video so that they can go ahead and recommend it to others. Okay, let's get into the sucker. So this monitor is an IPS monitor and it does 144 Hertz. It is HDR capable, but it doesn't reach the 400 nit brightness for HDR. Now, does that mean it does not get bright? No, it does get very bright. I have to turn the brightness of the actual monitor down. So it is not blinding my eyes and hurting my eyes, straining them or whatever. I turn it down to about 30%. It just means that some of the content that when it's you're watching dark videos and the colors, they won't pop as much, but they do pop fairly well on this. I have one behind me that was an open box unit that supposedly had no issues or anything dealing with it. So I did not show that one off just because it was open box and I wasn't sure how it would come and I didn't want to have any issues. I wanted to show off a new one that I had received. So without further ado, let's unbox. I'll show you what comes in the box. This is Visa Mount capable, but the stand on it is a really nice stand that moves up, down, and allows you to go full 90 degrees. So if you're a person that likes to have a really long chat, if you're a streamer, or if you just like to have it tilted, so you can watch videos that way, or for whatever reason, just have it tilted, um, you can. So, it, the packaging is really nice. You get protection on top here, which this says it is the front. So, foam packaging is out of the way. We have the monitor here which I will end up pulling all this out and doing a close-up of it for the back and the front. But that is the back and that is the front. There are two USB ports back here. There is a uh, USB A and then the old style USB, um, I can't remember what it was. But nonetheless, and then you have a display port and HDMI, uh, two of those, one display port, and you have a headphone jack, and you have DC in. Now I know it can supply through um, HDMI, and I believe through the display port. Um, but I, I know definitely HDMI will give you the audio into here and then um, DisplayPort 5 does the same thing and you can do audio out from your uh, unit. Now this one does not have any RGB lighting on the back. Uh, the power that comes on the back does have a power brick to it. But I mean this just looks gorgeous. You have super thin bezels on the side, uh, super thin bezel here on the top, and then a little thicker bezel down at the bottom. But as you can see there, it is G-Sync compatible. 
So, without further ado, let's push this forward so I can set the display down. And let's take out the rest of the items in the box. So we can toss the box to the side. Stand, the bottom part of the stand, a little bit of information for handling guide, and your accessories that you need. So, all I'm going to do is set that to the side, the handling care in there, and let me go ahead and set this up. So I will flip it because I don't want to end up flipping it on its front. That is not a good idea to lay a monitor down on the screen. And let's get this going so we can put both together and then I will put the monitor clipped in. Okay, so there is some plastic here on the red, as you can see. This piece here just clips down in there. And then there is a thumb screw or you can use a flathead to screw it in, but it does have a piece that pulls up to allow you to screw down. And just hand tighten it in so it stays in snug in place. Flip that down and you're good to go. Now we just need to place it here and we will snap the monitor in place. So I will sit down to get a better view. It is a bit angled. There we go and the monitor is in place. So, with this thing, we have the way to move it down. It was in its top position, so that is as far as it goes down, as far as it goes up from my table, and then there's your tilting and there's your tilt back. It only tilts one way. And then I will move this to the side and let's take a look at the accessories that you get in the box. So first thing I will show you is you get the USB. So you have the old school USB to USB A. I am not going to be using that. Here is the power brick, which I will be using. Definitely need this. Not a huge power brick per se, but it is fairly large. About the size of a normal non-gaming power brick for a laptop. Here we have the second part of the power brick. I will say there's definitely some length to these cables. So if you're not close to a power outlet, then this will work in getting you to the power outlet. I mean, this cable alone stretches almost the length of pulling my arms all the way to the side. My wingspan as it's called. And this one will more than likely be doing the same. So between both, you have a decent length in cables. And then there is still more cables in here to go over. So we have this one right here.
And then we have the display port cable, which this one is fairly short. I'm gonna say this one is three meters. So I will not be using this. I have my own um, display port 1.4. And here we have another display Port cable. Let me see, was that display port or HDMI? I just looked at it wrong. This might be an HDMI cable. Ah, yes. So HDMI cable, three meters, and then you get a display port. So you have those, and then you have this clip here. So what this clip is going to do, just to help out. Plastic clip come out your back. Rip it and it shall fly. So, what we're going to do is one, we no longer need the accessory box, so bye bye to it. But just so you can get a good idea, this clip goes right here and it is basically to help route your cables from here down and then out. That's all it's for. Uh, just a little bit of aesthetics to cable management. You could use some kind of long zip tie and zip tie down here if you need to, or however such. There is a button here, but let me guys uh, grab you and I will pause the video and we will go into the back end of here. Okay, so as you see here, we have the USB, USB A. We have DisplayPort right there, which is the main one that you're going to want to use. Then you have two HDMIs, just in case you need HDMI for whatever reason. You have headphone jack and you have power. And then down here is where you have the button that disconnects the monitor. And then back here, you have the Visa mount capable for this and then as you see there is red ring of metal around here and there is plastic to take off of it right there if I want to and then there is some plastic coating I need to take off around the bezels of the monitor but that is the gist of it and now let's get into some gameplay footage to show you how the monitor looks now granted i'm going to be showing it to you from my camera of the iphone and i will be going over a few features and showing you things that you can do with the monitor okay so down here i'm going to go over some of the menu options because i tried to show it earlier and you couldn't see it too well so we're going to start with this first and then get into some gameplay so here you see there's a button down here where my middle finger is and you can hold it and it will shut it off or you can just click it in once click it in again you got input going to the left right and then we're just going to click it again so it shows and go into the settings so as you see the settings pop up here and it tells you at the top that we are 144 hertz adaptive sync is on hdr is on um i got the fast response not the fastest and i'll explain that in a bit and then the dash mode so here you see i have rts to me that looks like the best but I have a lot of settings for my color options, change in color management, and there's some profiles you can find online. Here you're gonna see we have the game adjustment options here. There's adaptive sync, which allows G-Sync. So in case you're curious, that allows you to have G-Sync capabilities with your NVIDIA graphics card. So if you have NVIDIA graphics card, you're gonna want that on. Here you have the response time. So this is around four milliseconds response time when you have it on the fast setting which it can get down to one millisecond response time when you go to faster. The problem with that is you're gonna have a lot of ghosting behind some of your fast images. So it doesn't matter um, if you go with that option, it's gonna be something that I recommend not going with only because that ghosting can be really distracting, it doesn't look great. And I don't believe anyone who has this monitor has really recommend going with the fastest setting. Here, what you'll see is a cross here. And what that means is you can change the color options, but essentially if I go in and I click that I want the red cross here, it's gonna be that little uh, cross right there in the middle of your screen. So if you're a person like Call of Duty has 
um, for the new Modern Warfare, some TAC lasers, and it's supposed to help you see where it's going to fire from hip firing. You can use crosshair and that will help you for some of your hip firing shots if you so choose. Yes, it could be considered a little bit of an advantage where not every player can have it if you're using something like a television, but it's helpful on PC. So if you're a person that wants to use it, so be it. And you can, of course, change the colors on it. Every time you select something, it goes away, but they have a green version, they have a little red dot, and they have the green dot, or you can just set it to off. And then going down here, you can reset all of your settings. Down here, you have picture settings. And like I said, I let all this handle by my settings for my graphics card from Windows and stuff. So I have all that in there and I downloaded some profiles and use color management. So I just have the brightness 100% there. And then you have your input and then you have general, which allows you to change the language. Of course, I speak and read English. So that's where I have it set from. The power LED and then you have automatic standby where it can go into standby if you're not using it for a while. And then display port 1.4, I have that enabled. OSD lock, there's your information which tells you so you don't have to look in the back. Your serial number, your total power on time, and then your resolution. And then of course you got a reset there. So now without further ado, after going over all those features, let's get into some gameplay. Okay, and we are in the Call of Duty. So first thing I'm going to show you is some gameplay footage. Uh, there you see I have Obsidian for the MP7 as well as Damascus. The only thing I'm missing Damascus on is that new LMG, which I need to work on getting at some point and finishing up Damascus for it. Everything else, crossbow, all that stuff, Damascus. If you want to watch me stream, I will be streaming on YouTube most evenings during the week and weekends uh, whenever I can uh, in the evenings and during the day, possibly. Uh, so just check out YouTube and see if I'm streaming. Uh, apart from that, uh, we're going to jump straight into a match here. And uh, someone, they keep trying to go ahead and get me to join. They're doing a gun game. It was just atrocious trying to uh, play. And as you'll see, this is a domination which their matchmaking is not the greatest. Um, eventually it becomes 3 versus 6 and then everyone else leaves me and it's only me. And it's like no matter how I kill these people, there's just too many of them to stay capturing anything. So it's just a little ridiculous. But this monitor is amazing for this. So it's 1440p, 144 hertz, and let's just go over some specs of this monitor right here real quick just to make sure I don't forget anything about this monitor for you guys to know so this monitor is of course nano IPS technology which can reduce it down to one millisecond response time but that's if you put it on the fastest setting which I wholeheartedly tell you not to do no one really does it I don't do it Put it on the fast response, which is about four seconds response time. It is 27 inch monitor quad HD, which is 2560 by 1440. It is NVIDIA G Sync compatible. It does the free sync, which has adaptive sync to allow G Sync compatibility. Uh, as I mentioned before, it has 144 hertz refresh rate and HDR10. It doesn't quite meet the HDR10 standard. I believe that is 400 um, nits of brightness, but it does get fairly close. <laughs> and when playing games, you will see the HDR logo popping up. So let's get over the fine detail. So for the color gamut, we have DCI-P3, 98%. Um, of course, as I stated, it's an IPS panel. The color depth is 1.07 billion. It has the response time of one millisecond, but take that as a grain of salt because that's only at the faster settings, which I'm telling you no one's going to use. Um, you have the aspect ratio of the 16 by 9, which is fairly common unless you're going with 
super wide um, panels and you have the contrast ratio of 700 to 1 for men and then 1001 for the um, stuff. Your viewing angle, that's going to be 78 degrees right and left and 78 degrees up and down. For HDMI, as I mentioned before, you have the two that I shown you in the back. You have the one display port and you have the USB upstream uh, version 3.0 and you have the USB downstream uh, to each of the 3.0. So that's what that one is um, that allows it to go downstream upstream just in case you were wondering. So this panel is uh, 120 by 240 so it should work if you are overseas and power consumption is 50 watts in case you're wondering for the normal max is 65 watts and here we're gonna get into some special features so black stabilizer yes crosshair it does have I shown you super resolution plus yes High dynamic range, yes, take a grain of salt because it doesn't quite meet the full HDR standard. Uh, it does have the nano IPS technology, which I mentioned plenty of times before. It does support the FreeSync if you have a Radeon graphics cards, but for now, Radeon graphics cards for the newer ones, I think it's a 5700, has been having some driver issues. So NVIDIA is still on top at the moment. It has dynamic action and sync, flicker safe mode, it, uh, render, I'm sorry, reader mode, color, uh, collaborated, wide color gamut, yes, and HDR effect, yes. There's no built-in speakers, but, I mean, in all honesty, if you care about sound, you're not going to use the built-in speakers from your monitor. You would get speakers on the sides of your monitor, or if you're gaming, the best thing to have when playing first-person shooter games is going to be headphones. I personally have open pack headphones, which sound amazing from Sennheiser, and I can still hear the room around me should someone try to talk to me or say something, and I need to pull the headphone off to hear them a little better, but they can get my attention with the open pack headphones. Um, they're not wireless, but they do sound amazing for what they are, and I can take them when I travel. Okay, as far as dimensions, weight, and everything else, let's get into that. We have the withstand, so it's going to be 24.2 by 22.6 by 10.8. The shipping size is 29.2 by 8.2 by 20.6. Now remember, you, when you're measuring a monitor, the new standard is diagonal to diagonal. We're no longer measuring such as the TVs and stuff that your parents had back in the day where it was measuring from size to size. It's all going diagonal. The product weight without stand is 9.3 pounds, in case you're wondering, for a visa mount. Um, the product with stand is going to be um, the 24.2 by 14.4 by 2.2. So that's without the stand. The product weight with the stand is going to be 13.5 pounds. And then the total shipping weight is going to be 20.7 pounds. Uh, it does tilt. Uh, the height in millimeters is 110 millimeters. And yes, it does pivot. The wall mount size is 100 by 100. So it will fit any typical visa mount. Uh, there is the USB upstream cable. And then you can plug your regular USBs in there should you want to use that. It comes with the display port that is shown and the HDMI port, but I went out and got my own display port that's a little longer and I'm not using HDMI. I don't know anyone that would. And then you get one year warranty of parts and labor. So one thing I will say on this is it is an amazing amazing monitor and should you guys already be subscribed and want to keep supporting me i will tell you this anything i get 
I'm going to utilize to make this set up better and when I finally have it to where I like it enough to show you guys because I've changed some of the liquid stuff inside the PC and I've also modified some things as you see with um, two monitors of the same and maybe a third one in the future if I can ever do it and I have a stream deck and some other things on the way that are on back order everything that I have and will upgrade if I should happen to get a new microphone and a Go XLR. I will be giving to my girlfriend's kid to use for his desk setup. He has a brand new NZXT streamer build computer. Now, y'all might be saying, why did you go out and buy him a pre-built when you can build it yourself? Two reasons. One, y'all know what's going on right now in the world. So because of that, a lot of things are on back order. Hard to find, shipping is long, long waits. So the girlfriend and I decided that it's best for her as his birthday to buy him a computer that is pre-built that wouldn't cost a lot for the labor of the pre-built and NZXT was right there. They look great. They use their own case, which looks really nice and they use good enough parts for some of the stuff and I can upgrade if need be on some things and it came in super quick so we went that route so anything I upgrade will go to him if he doesn't need it then I gift it to a friend for their kid or themselves to use so I am currently doing that with some water cooling parts that I've upgraded I got two 560 radiators now instead of the one 360 slim and I have a few other parts so in closing, I'm going to say thank you guys for liking. Thank you guys for subscribing.